All right, this is my first YouTube video for 2021, 2022. I apologize for how my voice sounds, but it always sounds this way. So this is a review of the Bismarck One Document DBQ. Before we go over it, let me go over the rubric quickly. There are five different points to be had, and here's the example I did in class. Uh, there's a prompt about the Native Americans and their arrival. The rubric has, again, five points. Each is 20% contextualization. And then one part thesis. They both go in the introduction. The contextualization has to be at least three sentences long. Many kids did not do that. And I want you to write the word contextualization right there. Ending with a one part thesis. Those are the two things that go in the first paragraph. In the second paragraph, you have a topic sentence where it refers back to point A from the thesis, which you've just done. It restates it, and then it does three sentences of analysis. This is where you talk about the document in three sentences. You don't just quote it. You talk about what it means. Then you do the sourcing or the CAPS analysis. Remember, the analysis is what they said. CAPS has to be two-part who and why they said it, two-part. And then finally, I want you to end up with outside evidence. Outside evidence cannot be anything that was given to you in the prompt or the document or the attribution line. So as you see here on the screen, this was the example I gave you. And you guys at home looking at this, you can freeze this YouTube video and blow this up and look at this. You guys know how to handle the technology here. Um, here is the example I gave. Now notice it's two paragraphs and contextualization and thesis are in the first one. And then of course, here comes analysis, caps and then outside evidence. All right, so we're gonna go over to the actual document that we did. This is the document that I gave you last Thursday. And as I get more organized, I'll try to do more of these uh, videos. Because remember, I'm speaking specifically to the kids who really want to A, pass this class, and B, pass the exam. So here's the prompt I gave you. What were the reactions to the unification of Germany in 1871? Somebody tried to use that 1871 as outside evidence. Because it's in the prompt, you don't get credit for it. Here's the document. The nations of the world had viewed the Germans as weak. Oh, yeah, let me back up. Always read who wrote it or, or took the picture or what the picture is before you look at the document. It says it, So let's look at that's the bottom line called the attribution line. In the memoirs of Otto von Bismarck, written many years after the unification of Germany and just six months before his death in 1890. So the guy who did the unification is the one writing this. He is extremely likely to overstress it or make himself sound more positive or a better leader than maybe he actually was. Because he's about to die and he's writing about something that he accomplished. Now let's look at the document. The nations of the world had viewed the Germans as weak. They were spread across many small kingdoms and had been dominated by the French and the Russians. After the German people rose up with their nationalistic might and became part of a single powerful country, they became a force to be reckoned with on the European continent. So I'm just going to tell you right here, whoever wrote this, obviously it was Bismarck. The question is, what are the reactions? This person had a very, very favorable opinion of German unification. I'm sure the Russians did not have, and the French did not have, a, a positive reaction. And there may be some people who didn't care at all. There would be your three groups right there. Somebody who viewed this positively, somebody viewed it negatively, negatively, and some who didn't care. So I'm trying to keep this video relatively short. We're at four minutes and 20 seconds now. Um, oops, where is my example? Let's see. No, nope, not that one. Try this one. Uh-oh. Well, I'm going to have to pause the video and go find my example. Here it is. Contextualization. Now, notice I wrote that. You must write contextualization. And I'm going to spend it three to five sentences given a history. And here we go. Metternich once said Italy was not a country, but a geographic expression. 
Now, this is not about Italy. It's about Germany, but this is important. This was a pretty big insult to the Italians, and the same could be said about the Germans. At one point, there were over 300 Germanies, roughly half Catholic, half Protestant, and they were not united. So I'm just giving you a little historical background, but the person grading this, who's grading hundreds, maybe thousands of these that they're reading, once they've seen this introduction, they've already given you the point because this is good contextualization. The, I'm going to keep reading. The most dominant German states were Prussia and Austria, which both wanted to dominate. The genius behind German unification was the Iron Chancellor. Now that's outside evidence, but I'm going to go ahead and put it here because I really want the contextualization point. Otto von Bismarck. When Germany did unify under Prussian leadership, there were different reactions to it. Now here comes the thesis, and I want you to write the word thesis. Reactions to German unification include, now you're supposed to have three, but you've only got one document. So you're going to have one, and it's going to be point A. It was a wonderful event showing Europe how strong a unified Germany could be. So right now, you've got two points. If this is all you wrote, two points out of five, 20% plus 20%, you got a 40 out of 100 on this. You've got to do the other three points to get 100%. Here we go. As stated above, A, German unification was viewed positively by many. This is a topic sentence, but you need to do this to get the analysis and the argumentation point. You can see this in document three. Now, you can't circle with the computer, but I bracketed it. You were supposed to circle the document number where the writer absolutely glows with admiration for the new German state. Now that the Germans have their act together, they are a power and a military threat in the center of Europe. This would clearly be shown to be a true statement when World War II, when World War One, and World War II got started. Period. Now notice this is three sentences. This is what they said. So now you have another point. So now you have sixty percent out of a hundred. The next two points are caps and then outside evidence. Remember, caps has got to say who said it and why. Here we go. Here's caps. It should be taken into account that these are the words of Bismarck himself. That's who. And he's writing in his memoirs many years after the fact. And he likes to be want to be remembered as a great politician. This is why he might have said what he said. Remember, don't call him a liar. Uh, you know, or say he's shading the truth. Just say maybe, maybe he's being overly positive. He's a great politician, military leader. And statesman, so he may be embellishing the significance of this event. Boom, now you got up your fourth point, you have 80%. And so I have tons of outside evidence. I've already thrown in the Iron Chancellor. I could put that this was the Second Reich instead of the first or the third, but I decided to go ahead and list the three wars that he started. He was willing to provoke three wars to accomplish his unification. He started wars with Denmark, Austria, and France to achieve his goal. And so now I get that point. And so I have five out of five. This is 100%. I suggest if you really want to do well, you go back and freeze frame this and analyze this. This is exactly what it is supposed to look like.